Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Dave here in Altoona, Iowa with Scale Models Midwest. Friday afternoon. My apologies that I didn't get a video out to you on Wednesday or Thursday. I was busy working on the model and then just kind of lost track of time. But as you can see, it's 98% complete. I'll show you what I have done and what yet needs to be done. Start with the bottom end. Now on the Iceman Collection's chassis, this can fit pretty much any 124th and 125th scale car or truck. I'm actually going to this weekend order up a couple more of these complete chassis because I got a couple of trucks in mind that I'd like to use this for. Most notably, thinking about a 1960 pickup truck or the uh, Chevy Suburban from the 60s. Um, got a couple kits of each, so I figured I want to give it a shot. Anyhow, did a lot of adapting so it would fit up underneath the chassis. I shortened it probably by about a scale two or three feet, but as you can see, it tucked up underneath nicely. Handmade my own K member, painted it some uh, similar metallic blue as I did with the body. And of course, I used, per your suggestion, the stock exhaust manifolds from the cats all the way back to the mufflers. And then to the tailpipes, I went on ahead and used a little bit of KNS Precision Metals. Uh, round aluminum tube, cut an inch off on each side, got those looking nice and neat, tucked up underneath, and exiting more in towards the middle. I still have to adjust the one a little bit, but otherwise it looked pretty good. I used um, testers, clear part cement for all the glass, as for the uh, tail lights and headlamps as well, and ultimately I think uh, it turned out really well. Um, Paint-wise, the body looked really good the uh, paint laid out really well and as you can see I did a lot of sanding and polishing on this where I started with um, 2400 grit micro mesh polishing cloths all the way up to 12,000 and then I used the Novus plastic clean and shine that I have over here in the corner uh, number one and two I didn't do number three but after that was all done, used my tried and true Meguiar's Quick Wax that I've done on all my model kits and came out to a nice shine. Uh, it was a little dusty. I still have to play with it just a little bit, but um, I think overall this turned out really well. The blue, it's a very smooth paint job. The camera might not do it justice, but it did turn out very, very nice underneath the lights. It just looks nice. For the interior, I started off by doing a six-point roll cage and then realized things weren't really going to fit without some major reconstruction on the body. So I ended up just going with a four-point roll cage. And as you can see, uh, I painted that again, the same Tamiya TS-19 metallic blue as the body itself. The console I actually got rid of because, one, it wouldn't fit with these um, Iceman's seats in there. And as I started putting together some seat belts, I was using the um, SNS Specials. And uh, while these are great photo etched seat belts, I started doing one and I did a second one, and I'm like, they just didn't look the way I wanted to, so I'm going to use these for future builds. I just did not do it for this car. Um, is what it is. You kind of change on the fly and go from there. The interior, you might not be able to see it from the camera. Hopefully, I'll get a picture of it. I used a Detail Master Hurst shifter with one of the lead balls that came with it tried to find one of them that was more of a short throw shifter and found one that I liked so I got that in there in between the seats and it looks pretty good then ultimately everything pretty much on the outside was done I did flock the interior with some Ken's fuzzy fur that I had remaining um, the motivation the catalyst for why I wanted to build this was that wonderful Iceman Collections Coyote. Now he's got different model years from uh, 20, 
11, 2012, like my Mustang. And uh, he's got like the uh, boss ones. He's got the latest versions. It just, it's a good kit. I, I recommend highly going to Iceman and picking up a lot of his stuff and, and build what you can from his kits. They're just awesome. Um, can't say enough about it. I still have to fabricate a uh, air intake and uh, like a Canyon Aero filter. I've got some mock-ups that I'm working on right now. Also, obviously, I need to get the hoses in place, but I also need to get a radiator in place. Now, Iceman also has uh, electric fans, so I actually am ordering one of those. When I get it, I will paint detail that, put it in. Then I will put the coolant hoses and all in place, and then that will officially make this kit done. But I didn't want to wait another week to show you the kit as it was being built. I wanted to show you what I had done, and I figured 98% is good and better than zero. So, ultimately, I like it. Stance just right. It does look like it has a little bit of a negative camber on the front end, but I've um, got pictures of my old Mustang where I had the same thing with the caster camber plates, and yeah, I had it kind of torn out. Um, it is what it is. I didn't mind it. I do have the red uh, like four piston calipers on it. And right behind those 19-inch uh, Crown's wheels just looks really good. So, again, I like this. It, it turned out really, really well. A lot better than I expected. Even with all the surgery I had to do, the wheel wells, the, the flares, um, I like it. For the first effort, I think they did great. And I am not afraid to do flares in the future. So I will tinker with that and do more kits like that. But I'm going to go ahead and move to a little bit easier kit. I'll show you which one I'm going to build next. So be right back. Okay, as you see, the next build I've got on the table is the MPC 1970 Dodge Coronet Super B. I'm going to do this one as a relatively quick and easy build because I'm getting ready to start a longer build, if you will, of another model. I'm going to be showing that here in the next couple of videos. But this one is going to be pretty simple. I don't think I'll have it this slammed, but you never know. <laughs> this looks pretty sweet. The rims themselves, I think, are what's going to make the kit. These are from Steve Zimmerman, Z-Man Wheels. He's on Facebook, and these are running about maybe 25 bucks a set. Um, he does really good work with these and they just look good. So I figure I'm going to put that underneath here as the rolling stock. I'm going to paint the model Testers Go Men Go. I really like that color. It'll be very reminiscent of what Dave Freeberger owns. He owns a Super B as well. <clears throat> You'll see him through a Hot Rod Magazine or a Roadkill, Roadkill Garage, and he's always showing that particular car. That's why I bought this model. I wanted to build something like his, but then when I saw these wheels, I'm like, nah, I'm gonna do mine a little bit more in the weeds. And uh, that's the cool thing about the hobby. You buy a kit, you can build it box stock, you can build it with some detail, you can build it looking like an absolute junker, um, or really anything, mild to wild. And that's what makes our hobby so cool. So um, get out there and build a kit of your own. And if you'd like to display it on this channel, Send me a couple of pictures. My email will be in the description. I'd love to show off your kits. I'd love to see what you have. What you're building may very well inspire me. I know that a channels that I look at that I've mentioned in my description, from Blue Ox to HPI Guys to Ride on Replicas to see my BMW, uh, Uncle, uh, Colonel Reb, and um, Deep Junk Garage, all of them that I have listed. I've watched what they've got built or in the process of building and they're just so cool. I'm just, you know, enthused by what they're doing and inspired by what they're doing to be a better model builder myself. So 
with that, I'm going to go on ahead and let you go for the night. I'm going to start working on this over the weekend. Maybe Sunday, give you an update on that. And with that, have a great weekend. We'll see you around.